Hello, traders. We are three hours into the session. It is September 9th, Tuesday morning. We had a nice big drop last week. We were kind of expecting that. Market was very, very overextended on the long side. S&P 500 trading at a PE of 23, which is high by any historical measure. We don't have a stimulus plan. Coronavirus impact Q3 economic activity and a number of other small, I'm going to say relatively insignificant news items over the weekend. Brexit, they're not making any progress on. Japan had a really horrible GDP number. The coronavirus is starting to spread in India and trade tensions between the U.S. and China are continuing to flare up. So a little bit of a negative backdrop. Right now, you can see how this upward sloping trend line here on the S&P 500 it has been breached on the downside. That comes into play around 338, and that also was a horizontal support level. This used to be the all-time high from February. That meant it was resistance. Once we broke through, it became support and significant support at that. Now that we're below it, there's a good chance that the market will waffle around at this level for a few days. And then it'll take another probe at it, see if it holds. If it holds, we could bounce and gradually drift higher. If it does not hold, we'll see another leg lower. What does that mean? Well, that means right now I've been telling swing traders, be in cash. We need to evaluate the selling pressure. We need to evaluate stocks. A lot of stocks rallied in the last two months. You could just sense that there was a lot of fluff because those moves had gone parabolic and really didn't have any fundamentals to justify that kind of move. When you get these market pullbacks, you can sort out all the stocks and find the real McCoys. The ones that are treading water right now want to move higher. Those are the stocks that you want to be in. And I'm going to show you a couple of them. In fact, I showed you one last night. It's doing really well today. And I'd mentioned to keep an eye on that stock. As far as the market overall, this is a juncture where you have to wait and see. So if we have a little bounce in here, and then we come down and test this support level again at 336, and that support holds, that will be a double bottom, and we have a chance to gradually float higher. However, if the market does have a little bounce, and then it sells off, and that support at 336 does not hold, and it fails quickly and easily, then we are due for another leg lower, and that might take us down, who knows, perhaps even to the 200-day or 100-day moving average. So let's put those numbers up. You can see 314 roughly is the S&P 500 100-day moving average. It's possible that we could test that. We also have a few other support levels along the way also. That 320 level might also provide some support. So I'm not looking for a bloodbath here. I feel like the market had a couple of different avenues that it could take. One avenue would be a little pullback like this, and then to go sideways into the election. That gives stocks time to grow into their current valuations. Another possibility is that you rally up, and then you have another leg lower, and then we spend time around these major moving averages going into the elections. But either way, the market's ahead of itself right now. Things got a little bit overheated. We don't have the economic activity. We don't have the earnings news to really justify where the market is currently. And Q3 was supposed to be a go-go quarter. Not so. We had much of the country shut down again in phase three. That's going to continue to weigh on the recovery. And we don't have the stimulus plan. I think that a lot of small business owners without that stimulus are going to be forced to lay off workers. And that means that we might be seeing the unemployment rate tick higher again. Watch that initial jobless claims number coming out on Thursday. It has been averaging above a million. I view that as problematic, especially with stocks trading at such high PEs. So for right now, I don't have much to show you today because the market is flatlining. We'll go back into that five-minute chart. You can see the 1OP indicator has been pretty flat in here. We're getting a higher low 
double bottom. As I mentioned to you, the fact that we have not taken out the low and we're three hours into trading, that is mildly bullish. If we can get through the high of the day, then the market is likely to start filling in some of this gap. And that 338 level right now is resistance. So we'd like to get above it. And we'd like to close above it. If we do, we should have a couple of decent days. So I'm preferring to trade from the long side right now. So let's go in and take a look at a couple of stocks that I like today and we'll call it a day. RUN looks really, really good today. You can see the relative strength. I always like keeping the S&P 500 running in the background. You can see the market's been gradually higher, but the stock has actually been steadily moving higher. In fact, it's making a new high for the day and it is through the high from Friday. Very, very bullish price action. So I like that. WK. HS. This stock I showed you last night in a video that I sent out Monday evening. I did a market recap. I showed you this stock. You can see how the stock opened around $19.60. It's at 2377. This stock is up more than 10% today. And I showed it to you last night. You had every opportunity to buy this stock on the open. If you happen to miss the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on your notifications. You do not want to miss these videos because they have great stock picks in them. Also, lots of education. So please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss these. That could have been a really nice winner for those of you who missed that video. So I still like it. I think the stock still does well. One of the reasons I liked it was this relative strength here. You could see the big bloodbath that we had on Thursday and Friday. Stock not even impacted at all by that market sell-off. That tells me buyers are lined up. Every little dip, buy, 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 buy. It can't go down because buyers want in. So you can see that horizontal breakout right there. Goodbye. So that looks good also. Roku. Uh, I scratched this morning. It's got a nice horizontal breakout right here. It has weathered the sell-off pretty well also. It looks like it wants to grind higher. Not one of my favorites today. BYND, I did make a little bit of money on today. It's got to get through this horizontal resistance level at about uh, pretty close to the high of the day. I would say somewhere in that 138 range, and I think it's got a chance to go. SPCE is one that I've traded today. It gets through that 100-day moving average today and closes above it, which is at $18, which is where the stock is now. I think you're going to see SPCE continue higher. Do you see how easy it is for me to find these stocks? They're right here. Heavy buying list, relative strength 30. These are the stocks that we want to be in right now. You can see Microsoft starting to gain a little bit of steam in here, but still negative. I like to focus on stocks that are showing green when the market is down. CRWD had this nice horizontal resistance level. Once we broke out above it, it became support. Came down and tested that Friday and today. And now look, the stock is bouncing off of that. Let's go in and take a look at the daily chart. Look at how that stock has been grinding higher. Let's overlay the SPY so we can see it better. Market down big. Another big drop right in here. You can see that drop in the market. Look at the stock floating higher. Relative strength. Buyers lined up. So if you're early on a stock like this, because the buyers are there, even if you had bought, let's say the market's going down like this and you had bought right here on the notion that this was going to bounce off of the prior low of the day and you were early and the market had another leg lower, this stock would have held up really well and you would have been able to buy it, probably scratch it, Maybe you would have lost a little bit of money on it, but if you were right and the market bounced, whoosh. Really nice winner. That's how we play relative strength and relative weakness. It is a huge trading edge for us. So we've got the 1OP indicator that we use as our market gauge. It's not really telling us a whole lot right now. Because the market's not going anywhere, you don't have to worry too much about getting the rug pulled out from underneath you. So if you see a super, super strong stock like RUN, like CRWD, like WKHS, you can buy it 
and not really worry too much about having an adverse market move against you. So I really like those three stocks today. There are probably some others that I can find. My suspicion is that the market's going to continue to grind higher now that support has been established for the first three hours and the market hasn't been able to move below it. I think there's going to be a temptation for some people to start nibbling on stocks and I think we're going to see the market close above that SPY 338 level. If it does so in a convincing manner, meaning we really have a nice little rally in the last hour of trading, then I think we could see some follow through buying on Tuesday morning. But keep in mind that for swing traders, this is not a go-go, have-to-be-long buying opportunity right now. All we're doing is we're taking a brief pause after a really big drop. We had about a 240-point S&P drop in two days. I told you these moves are, are swift and they're very deep. Bullish speculators have been flushed out, so we don't have that selling pressure right now. Now we got to wait and see, is there profit taking that's taking place? Is there natural selling that's taking place? Is that what's going to drive the market lower over the course of the next couple of weeks? Or are there some legitimate buyers here? So any little pop that you see right here, don't think that this is the one, oh my gosh, we're going right back up and through the high. Not going to happen. We're going to have a nice little bounce. It'll hit resistance. And then we're going to come back. And we are going to test this SPY 336 level again. You have to wait for that retest because we don't know what's going to happen until that happens. It could mean a move lower down to these major moving averages. It could mean a bounce and a nice gradual move higher. So, this is kind of a waiting period in here. We're going to get a bounce. We're going to get a retest. So I would keep your swing trades at a minimum. If you're doing an overnighter and you have some nice follow through during the course of the day and nice profits in a position and you think that we're going to have follow through buying overnight, then you can hang on for just overnight. But for the most part right now, I am day trading. I'm taking advantage of these intraday moves. So I've given you some stocks to consider for day trades this afternoon on the notion that the market will hold support and move above that 338 level. Please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss trades like WKHS. Also, please give my video a thumbs up if you like the content. We will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.